Welcome back to the second part of our tutorial. I assume you have seen the first one where I described how to prepare a puppet for our rig. If not, or you have decided to skip this stage and you think you are ready to go, we can start preparing our rig right now. You have all the assets ready in the link below the video, so you can follow an experiment as we go. Before we go into After Effects though, let's have a brief look at our text file over here. It's titled Expressions and includes three expressions we'll be using to actually build our rig. First one, Mouth and Hands Rig Expression. It will help us to time remap our mouth and hands poses. This one we'll be using to break our layers position in 2D and in 3D to separate our axes X, Y, and Z. And the last expression combined with the checkbox effect will let us switch on and off the layer's visibility. It's especially useful if you plan to build a rig with many characters in it. Okay, so let's get to the fun part and dive into After Effects. My typical workflow starts with opening my camera rig project so I don't have to build my rig every single time from scratch. By the way, if you want to learn how to build a camera rig like that, follow the tutorial by Think module, link below the video. Once we are here, let's change some settings. Perhaps we start from changing the frame rate to 24 frames per second, the fewer keyframes to animate the better, and let's say the, the length of the comb to 25 seconds. I think it will do. The idea is that the fold comb we are trying to build should be definitely longer than the longest scene we are planning to do in our animation. It's always easier to actually shorten the comb than, than extend it. And let's say rename our rig uh, to a default uh, comp. The assumption is that once you build our rig with, let's say, a few characters in it, we'll be using the same rig and save it for each scene with a different name. Okay, at this stage we are ready to import our head and body files. Let's import them with uh, choosing composition so we have access to separate layers. Okay, at this stage I think we can do a little bit of housekeeping. Let's move the body in here and the head as well. Okay, at this stage I think we can create our control layer. So let's right click and create a null layer. Let's rename it to controller. Okay, we can also get rid of a few layers which we will not be using. So we hide them by pressing the shy button and doing the same on the chosen layers. Okay, let's now open our body composition. We use the key shortcut control I to select all the layers. Let's copy then control C and switch to our default layer where we just press control V and paste them over here. Let's move them down under the control layer for clarity. Let's drop in our face layer. It's gonna take a little bit to render. We we'll keep our face layer as one cop as we want to animate it as one unit. It takes a little bit to render even though quality is set to quarter. One more thing, since we have the neck inside the face composition, we must cut it out and paste it out to a default comp. As this way we'll have a chance to animate it separately from the head. Before we do so, let's adjust it a little bit so it's not that big. When I drew it, I obviously made it too big, more of a restless rack as you can see over here. So we have to uh, make some adjustments to make it a little bit smaller. Let's click Ctrl X to cut the layer, the, the neck layer, and paste it back to the default comb. Okay, we'll place it under the face. and parent the face to it. Now we can scale it down to fit the rest of the body. Let's move the skirt layer up and well, and see how it works. Well, the head is a little bit too big still, so let's scale it down. And 
maybe somewhere like um, I would say 15 will do. Okay, but still the neck is a little bit too wide. So let's unparent it and scale the next x axis only. Let's fill out the neck and skirt layer to have a better look at what's going on here. Okay, it looks good. So let's parent back the face to the neck. And at this point, we can check how those two layers rotate. So let's choose our neck layer and press R to reveal the rotation property. Okay, so let's rotate it a little bit. To my, in my opinion, it looks perfect. What about the head then? Whoops. We have a problem something weird is happening over here the head as you can see when we rotate it gets skewed okay so maybe moving the pivot point will help somehow okay let's check this option no way still the same obviously we have a problem with something actually it took me a little bit when i was making my animation to figure out what is happening over here so I made the same mistake over here to show what you can encounter and how to behave in such a situation. The problem is that the head layer is parented to a layer whose scale properties are not uniform. And our parented layer inherits those properties and seems weird behavior. One way to remedy this situation is to pre-comp the neck layer. Though first we have to unparent the head and then pre-comp it. Okay, so let's now parent the head back to the neck and see how it works. Voila, all works fine this time. Okay, so let's change the pivot point on neck and see how it works. All looks fine. Okay, so let's parent it to the skirt layer now. And at this point, we can also change the pivot point of the skirt layer. And we can once again check if everything works fine once we're rotating. Okay, so all follow suits. Okay, so now let's select all hand shapes for the right hand and pre-compose them. And we do the same for the left hand as well. Okay, let's now move the left sleeve up so we can see it and position it. Let's switch the pan behind tool shortcut Y and change its pivot point. Let's switch the rotation on by pressing R when holding shift. Let's rotate it. Okay, it works well. Now let's move the pencils and the pocket up and place it in place we like. Let's change its pivot point and the same for the pencils. We'll check how it works. Ok, let's zero the properties and parent them. Pocket with the skirt and pencil with the pocket. And of course the sleeve with the skirt too. Let's minimize those layers and move to the other sleeve. Again we change the pivot point and parent it to the skirt. Let's move to the arms. Let's solo them first. Let's rename them properly not to get lost. 
Okay, now we have only the left hand selected. Let's change the blending modes to difference to see where they overlap. We have an idea where to set our pivot point. Let's switch the background to transparent to see it better. Let's zoom in and set quality to full. Okay, let's move the first hand. Again, let's press R to review rotation and see how it works. It seems okay. But to be 100% sure, we must change blending mode again to normal and then we can be absolutely sure that it looks fine. Maybe we can move the hand a bit. Okay, let's check it and see how it works. Okay, so let's move up the arm and do the same for the upper arm and forearm as well. Let's parent the left arm with the left sleeve. and move the whole left arm up so they are over the skirt. Let's see how it all works. You have to develop the habit of always checking if all works fine, if it rotates properly, if it moves properly. Assuming it may often be misleading as we saw it in the case of our head precomposition before. Let's now solo our right hand and sleeve and repeat the whole procedure until we are happy with what we can see. Okay, let's now deal with the legs and solo the skirt and our left leg and foot. Again, we will use the same technique and try it out our arrangement once in a while to see if all works well.
Let's now parent our foot to the leg down and leg down to the leg up. And one more thing, the pivot point in the leg up needs to be changed as well. Let's switch off the skirt layer off to see it better. Okay, let's try it out. A bit, maybe we can move the leg a bit up so we will give ourselves more room for movement in the future when animating. Okay, now all we have to do is parent the leg up layer with the skirt and we can move on to the other leg. Obviously the procedure is exactly the same as in the case of the other leg. The only thing left at this stage is to make sure that the legs are more or less the same length. So let's move them around a bit to make it look good. Okay, the only thing left now is to parent our leg with the skirt and voila! Okay, let's switch off the solo buttons on those layers to see what our character looks like. Okay, let's move our skirt layer up and down to make sure all our layers are attached properly and they all move uniform which means they are all parented properly. Okay, looks we didn't forget anything, which is great. But what if you wanted our character to bend over, let's say? When we rotate the skirt, legs rotate as well. We have to then add one more layer, so let's create another node. And call it maybe the whole body. and move it down, under the skirt layer. Though it's not necessary at all, but I think it will make more sense to us when we place it in a proper place. So let's parent our skirt to it, and since our puppet is in the middle of the screen, as well as the new null, we don't even need to change its position and pivot point. We will also select our upper joints of our legs by holding control when selecting, and we can make a selection of a couple of layers away from each other in the stacking order. So now let's parent them to our now called whole body. Let's now rotate the skirt. The character bends as expected. Let's move now the whole uh, character, but this time let's use the whole body layer for it. Okay, let's dive into our uh, hand precon and deal with our hands. Our layer 2, as I believe this is the layer on which we base our hand arrangement. Let's get back to the main comp to see what happens when we switch it off. Yes, that's the hands missing. Okay, let's switch it on and place it on top of the other uh, layers. We'll use this hand as the basis of our hand arrangement then. Let's select all layers and by pressing Ctrl N to select all, then press Home on numeric keyboard to get to frame 1 if you are not there already. Okay, let's press ALT plus N square brackets to cut the layers to one frame long. Now we have to play with the other three hand shapes. 
using the pivot tool and blending mode set to differs to overlay our perfect circle which constitutes the basis of each handshape. Ok, it all looks fine. So once again, let's choose all four layers and right click to see this menu. From here, let's choose keyframe assistant and only available option at this stage, which is sequence layers. And press ok. Layers are now sequenced. Let's shorten the composition now to fit those four layers. By pressing N when we are on our last handshape and right clicking on this panel and selecting trim comp to work area. Ok, now we move up and down our hand composition and we can see changing hand shapes, which gives us the illusion of movement. But you can easily see that our thumb is different direction every single frame. So uh, let's move this uh, hand free shape to overlay those two shapes and press S while holding shift to reveal scale property. Let's uncheck uniform scale and change X scale to minus 100. This way it should actually fit uh, the other shapes as well. Ok, I also think that the open hand shapes is way too small compared to the others, so let's enlarge it a bit and adjust it to fit the others better. We obviously did the same with the other hand, position our hand shapes and reverse the hand scale properly if necessary if the thumb doesn't match the other rest. Ok, let's go to the main composition right now and see what we have managed to achieve. Using page up and page uh, down button, we can move one frame at a time and see how our shapes change. Ok, it's time to use our expression list, so let's open it and copy our mouth and shape ring expression to make it work magic. Ok, and to be more precise, actually we'll use it to remap our time values. We must right click on our layer and from here we'll choose time. From here we we'll choose enable time remapping. Let's now remove the second keyframe which in fact time freezes our comb on the first frame. Let's do the same with the other hand.
Let's now alt click on the stopwatch and paste our expression. Obviously we will get an error message as our expression is referring to a layer which doesn't exist. But no worries. Let's go to our control layer and choose the expression control slider from our effects menu. Let's rename it for clarity to left hand shapes. And just go back to our hand precomp for a while to see something. As you can see, we have four shapes. Therefore, we will edit our slider to match this value. By right-clicking on the slider and choosing Edit Value, we have the first index value 0. So we put 3 as the maximum value, and altogether we have the range of 4. Let's duplicate the effect and rename it to Right Hand. Now all you have to do is link whatever is after the equal sign with our slider control. Respectively, left hand with left hand slider and right hand with the right hand slider. Let's now check how it works. As you can see, when we move our slider within the given range, our hands change shape, and we can easily animate them using our control layer. Let's now precompose our mouth layers and do the same as we did with our hands. This time, there's no need to make any adjustment to our mouth shapes as we place them properly in Illustrator so they overlay perfectly. Let's time remap this layer too and paste our expression which we still have copied in our clipboard. Let's move to our control layer which is still visible as we locked its view and copy one control and rename it to math shapes. Let's now parent our expression from the mouth precomp. We will also have to change our sliders range from 0 to 7 as we have 8 hand shapes. So altogether, counting from 0, we have the range of 8. Let's see now how it works. OK, it works fine. Now let's go to the face precomposition and deal with the eyebrows. We can rig them and give the face some ability to show emotions. Let's move the right eyebrow up so the two eyebrows stay together. Okay, we can take here two different approaches, which both work fine. First approach. We separate our position into X and Y position. Let's now duplicate our slider again and rename it to eyebrows up and down, as I think moving them separately wouldn't make any sense. So we just stick to moving them up uh, and down both together at the same time. I think it will do. Let's now alt click on Y position stopwatch and parent it to our slider. Something weird happened. Our eyebrow suddenly landed on the top of our composition. Simply put, we told After Effects to position the eyebrow to the value of the slider, which at this point was somewhere around 6 pixels. Therefore, we have to fix it. First, we must get rid of our expression and link our transform position of the initial position of our layer in Y axis, like that. Then we add plus and at the end, parrot it to the slider. This way, the eyebrow should move only six pixels down from its initial position. 
Okay, let's zero our slider and try approach number two with the second eyebrow. This time we will copy our breaking layer position expression. Since it's a 2D layer, we will break it into X and Y axis only. We'll just paste the expression. And again add a plus sign and link it to our slider. Since our slider is set to zero at this time, we shouldn't notice any difference in the position. Yeah, it behaves as predicted. Now, as you can see, when we move our slider, we can move both eyebrows at the same time. Let's try to establish now what will be a good range to animate our eyebrows. I think the value of maximum somewhere around 6, 7 will be okay. And the value of minimum will set somewhere to around... ten. I think 10 will be perfect. Altogether, we can animate our eyebrows with the use of our slider within the range of 17 pixels. Or maybe just to make this number round, we can set it to 15 and it will do. I guess we can finish this part of our tutorial and we will continue with the rest of the rig in part 3. So I hope to see you soon.